Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a huge empties video for you. Um, I'm really inconsistent with these. It just depends how many empty products I actually have here in my bag. I don't tend to do them every month. I feel like that's forcing something that possibly might not happen. I've got a decent amount to talk to you about today. So let's just begin. Uh, a foot mask, an exfoliating foot mask. I had really high hopes for this. I feel like it did absolutely nothing. Um, it's supposed to, like, you're supposed to put like the socks on as such and leave your feet soak in this acid stuff. It doesn't burn or anything like that. It's kind of like a fruit acid. And then a few days later, your skin is supposed to start peeling. My skin went a bit dry and flaky at absolute best. And I would say my feet look exactly the same as what they did prior to using this mask. So I would not recommend. I think it was about £5.50 from Amazon. Um, wouldn't bother. A body shop chamomile. What is this called? A scrumptious cleansing butter. I absolutely adore this. I've recently just repurchased another one of them and I have another one on the go. Um, really good. Shifts all the makeup that needs to be shifted, even like really tough mascara. Um, yeah, really like this. One thing I would say about it this has happened to me twice now with the ending of two tins. Here's the other one. When you get right down to the dregs of the tin, it can smell quite chemically rather than its unscented nature, I guess. Does it even smell? It smells ever so slightly of probably what chamomile smells like, but once you get right down to the dregs, there's just this sort of different smell about it which I was a bit uncomfortable with but it didn't like change the way the product worked or it didn't like affect my skin in any way it was just weird to smell so would repurchase those have repurchased these um really enjoy so this is um a soap, a hand soap that I've got on the go at the moment I'm currently working my way through all the hand soaps that I've been gifted over the years rather than um, repurchasing like plastic pump hand soaps and stuff like that and as we know recently soap has been quite hard to get hold of I don't think it is anymore I think it's back on the shelves um, because people aren't panic buying it anymore but yeah it's just giving me the opportunity to use up stuff um, this one is called but itches get stuff uh, read it for yourself they get stuff done. Um, luxury soap with fairy dust. Uh, doesn't have any sort of sparkle or anything in it. I think it's just a uh, quirky packaging for the matter. Okay, so pick a mix color, pink, um, pastel, instant spray on color, wash in, wash out. I bought these for Holly's birthday. This color didn't show up on her hair, even though I did some research into it and it said that it would. I sprayed it into my hair and it was a bit of like a nothing and a waste of time. Wouldn't recommend, waste of money, waste of time. So an after sun spray, this was from the Aldi brand. I quite like the Aldi brand of sun care um, and things like that. And their, you know, an after sun lotion is the same as the next after sun lotion. There's no real like winner or loser in the field. Um, but yeah, that's empty. I want to be able to find an eco-friendly version so I don't have the plastic. So if anybody knows about that, then let me know. Okay, so two of the Aldi's deodorants that I really like, I have stopped using. I've moved on to like a natural deodorant, which you will see in a minute. But the, the caps of these broke off, both of them. This one's basically full. This one's basically empty. And then I took caps off other ones and put them on these and they just literally like no product will spray out of them at all. Like I'm deploying the, the thing, nothing will come out. So they're literally just going to go into the bin like that because that's really annoying. Plus I don't really want them in my life anymore because I've moved on to better things. Okay, so this is an empty wrapper. It's a really random empty wrapper for a solid shampoo bar. 
um, which was horrific. It said it was coconut oil and charcoal shampoo. Meh. It was really soapy, smelled highly of just soap, like to the point where it like almost like burnt my nose. It was so strong. It was like, <sighs> smells bleh. I felt like it dried out my hair, probably the charcoal in it to be fair. Um, it's a local brand as well. So I really wanted to support the local brand. No, not good. Not a good shampoo bar. Okay, so two empty face masks here. So this one I got in a baby shower like pff, two years ago, probably. Leopard face sheet mask and it actually looks like a leopard. I think I've got a photo of myself wearing it somewhere. If I still have it, then I'll insert it on the screen. Really fun, but face masks, as we all know by now, are really bad for the environment. Like this is as bad as using a wet wipe. It, you put it in, it's pla uh, you put it into the bin, it's plastic. It doesn't like biodegrade down for like another 500 years or something crazy. So for uh, that, that was a gift. Like I said, I got it in a baby shower. Um, this too, I just used this one just this morning. I love these face masks, I really do. But like, I just won't repurchase them because of the whole, you put it into landfill and it doesn't biodegrade down for like 500 years. It's just like, at this obscenity for the amount for the enjoyment that I get out of it on my face for like 15 to 20 minutes it's not worth 500 years in the soil it's just it's just not that being said you know you do you you do your own thing but I hope you make the right decisions and don't repurchase these in the future it's you know lots of lots of it seems like it's a good thing. It did hydrate my skin. It's for dry, dehydrated skin. Great, hydrates and softens and refreshes. Yes, it did. Um, with skin loving desert plant sugar and sodium, whatever that is, um, it's vegan and cruelty free. So like, you know, it ticks all the boxes, but like, you know, this plastic packaging won't biodegrade down um, and nor will the actual face mask itself, which is a shame, so. That's all I've got to say about those. Finally finished um, my Superdrug Naturally Radiant 2-in-1 Moisture and Serum Moisturiser. Um, in the end, I found this to be, I used to love this particular range from Superdrug, but as I've gotten older, I found like it's, um, this moisturiser is not enough for my skin now anyway. And it just smells, it smells aftershavey, but like chemically aftershavey. It's not a nice deal. So I ended up using that on my legs in the end. Same with the brightening eye cream. I don't believe in eye creams anymore. I believe if, you know, a moisturiser is safe enough to put on your face, then it's safe enough to go near your eyes. Um, so I put my moisturiser all the way up to my eyes now. There's going to be some confliction about that. People will be like, no, you can't do that. Why not? Tell me why you can't. Um, so that's gone. I also use that on my legs as well, just to get it used up. Sick of seeing it in my collection. The Jason and Argan Oil Shampoo Bar um, was the first ever shampoo bar that I bought from Lush. And then this time around, I used it years and years later. Um, for the second time and really really enjoyed it. Um, I've branched away from Lush at the moment. I'm having a sort of I hate Lush thing at the moment because I just feel like their products are really overpriced and I really want to support smaller local businesses right now. However that being said I haven't found a shampoo bar that is as good as one from Lush at the moment. So I'm on a quest at the moment to find that. It's gonna be a pointless quest soon because I'm shaving my hair off in literally six days time. Um, but that's all I can say for you guys about that. Another thing here from Lush is the Jade Roller Skin Cleanser. So I'll stick a little picture of it up on the screen for you. Um, Cause obviously it's like a no packaging type of thing. Um, I really enjoy these solid cleansing bars from Lush. Um, the jade roller is, you've got these sort of like jade beads or green beads that are supposed to sort of like help exfoliate. Is this strange? I don't really understand them. They end up getting washed down the drain and I don't really fully know what they are. So 
I need to find out what those plastic green, no, what those green sort of beads are within the actual solid bar for me to understand if I want to repurchase this product. And again, because am I washing something down the drain that's not going to biodegrade or it's going to be harmful to like aquatic life and stuff like that? I want to be more conscious about stuff like that. I just want to get that question answered. So an Oral B toothpaste here, which is full. It's disgusting. It was bought for Holly. Obviously, it's got Anna and Elsa on it. I find Oral B to be like the brand to beat with regards to like toothpaste and um, oral hygiene and oral care. Um, I didn't, however, realised realise that this was such a disgusting flavour. It says mild flavour on it. I did not, however, realise know that that meant bubblegum flavour. Holly will not touch this with a barge pole. I won't touch it because it's obviously not enough for my teeth. Um, and that's that, it's gotta go in the bin. I can't donate it to anybody since so it's been opened. It's been opened for way too long and the expiry date on it says 21st of the 3rd, 2020. So there we are, that's that. The toothpaste, however, that she does like is Colgate. We've moved on to a big girl toothpaste now, other than this one. Um, but yeah, this is the Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection for Kids plus Sugar Acid Neutralizer in a mild mint flavour. She gets along with this one, so that's great. We've moved on to the next one up at the moment, so when that's empty, I'll give you a review on that. But I can recommend those. I know they're not cruelty-free. I have struggled to find a cruelty-free toothpaste, which I will go on to in a minute. So I've got another one of my Oral B original gum and enamel repair things. This is the best toothpaste in the world for me. I don't find anything else is good enough. My teeth go into a really not very nice place if I use something else, which I have been using because obviously I know this isn't cruelty free and I know this is plastic that sits in landfill for about 500 years before it even biodegrades down. So I've tried to go down the eco route. So this is the Hydrofill toothpaste in a pure mint flavour and it's got fluoride in it. Now, what I have noticed when trying to find a natural toothpaste is none of them have got fluoride in them. And I genuinely thought that you needed fluoride in a toothpaste to help your teeth. And if you don't, then something bad is gonna to happen to your teeth. Somebody please help me out with this because I've done a bit of research and I'm still really confused. So this itself, this is secondary packaging, which I think is completely unnecessary. Just get rid of the secondary packaging. It's just extra cardboard that nobody needs. It's obviously cruelty free, certified natural cosmetics. Um, it's, it's made in Germany, right? And I think the actual tube itself is biodegradable. It looks like it's plastic, but apparently that it's not. Um, no, it's not good for my teeth. Like these teeth down here just do not get along with it. My gums have started hurting again. Um, the mint flavor's like not strong enough. So I feel like I've still got like smelly breath after it. I don't feel fresh and clean after it. Um, I just don't feel like the clean is very good. Um, I just, no, I know it's the only for the first one that I've tried and there are probably many, many more to try. So if any of you guys have tried a natural toothpaste with, you know, eco-friendly packaging and stuff like that, that is really good, then let me know. But maybe it's just me, maybe like my oral care routine needs more um, than something like this. Like a lot of people can just buy like a 95 pence toothpaste from like Superdrug's own range and be absolutely fine with that. Or they'll just buy whatever's on offer or whatever. If I do that, I do, my teeth just go disgusting and my gums start hurting. So maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just like the odd one out that needs something extra. And that's why things like this don't suit me. Ulbus oil, because before coronavirus was a thing, me and Holly got ill. It was just on the cusp of like, we were learning about what coronavirus was, um, but we didn't have temperature or anything like that. We both got really nasally and Ulbus oil just sort of like, helps the whole situation when we've both got colds, particularly while getting to sleep. We've got one of those little plug-in, Calpol plug-ins, um, and I can't really be bothered to buy any more new plug-in things, the like the refill vapor things. So I just literally 
drop this on top of the old vapor thingy and it smells of all the soil in the room and that really helps clear everything and get us to sleep because when you've got a cold trying to sleep and then you're all blocked up and nasally it's just it's a hard it's hard work to get to sleep basically i really like all the soil um i'm not even sure if it's like natural or anything or if there's a natural version or more eco-friendly version but you know predominantly the majority of this packaging is glass and then you've got the plastic top but it's better than buying it in like the plastic nasal tube that you stick up your nose don't do that just buy this it lasts so much longer insect ease soothing bite spray i never used to believe in this stuff until myself and holly got stung by a wasp literally seconds between the two of us my mother-in-law brought this down from her bathroom and let me spray it and i was like wow that instantly took away everything i went for a dog walk the other day and i got bit um as i was walking through some long grass i felt it instantly and i looked down and i saw the bug literally on my leg i was like how literally seconds um came home sprayed this on boom no itching it's brilliant um i've got another one of these on the go downstairs it's in my first aid cupboard um but yeah love that we'll definitely repurchase and now i do believe in it okay so a moisturizer here from aesop or aesop it's the mandarin facial hydrating cream um mandarin rind lemon rind tangerine rind light moisturizing cream for daily use and normal combination skin so my friend vicky bought this for me i love the packaging apart from the plastic lid but sometimes you just cannot break away from some sort of plastic packaging but it's a brown glass jar love 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 that um i thought that was like really bougie but really in a like simplistic way when i first started using this it was way too deep for my skin way too thick even though it says it's light um but i persevered i was like interchanging it with like um this and then my skin for the last like six months to a year has been changing and it's really needed something so this became brilliant it was really really good um i've loved it the smell of it's amazing um but I've been doing like lots of research into like skincare and stuff like that. And they say things like smell and perfumes and um, scents when they're in or like even um, essential oils and things like that in your skincare is a massive no-no. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that's almost like, you know, you've just created yourself a whole new minefield of like, what you're allowed to put on your skin and not what you're allowed. You're allowed to put anything on your skin that you want. Do you know what I mean? But like, if you really want to like ramp up the skincare and do the right thing, um, then apparently those are a big no, no. And I've read that across many different websites, many different YouTubers. And, um, when I've been doing my research, that's like a big thing. Um, that being a said, this smells divine. Um, I re I went and bought myself um, a body shop moisturizer, which you know is really almost too thick. It's a lot thicker than this, um, and I feel like this may be what I need, or maybe just slightly a step up, almost like a medium, <laughs> medium thickness. I don't know, but I really like that. I would like to try some more from the Aesop range. Um, has anybody else tried stuff from this brand? I felt that this was lovely, it just suited me so much. So here I have got some natural deodorants. Natural deodorants is something that I've wanted to switch from this to this for a very long time. But for me, the jump in price was a big deal. So you can pick this up for less than a pound. And these range between about six to 15 pounds for a tube. So this one was about nine or 10 pounds um, and it was the first one I used. So this is the Ben and Anna sensitive deodorant, natural deodorant. Um, I bought this from my local eco store because I want to support local. It smelled really good and I was like, well, you've got to start somewhere. I hadn't done too much research into swapping over to natural deodorants and this was like the first one. Smells absolutely amazing. Smells kind of like love hearts. 
Um, I'm going to make a whole separate video about what happened with this. Um, it turned out to be okay-ish. Um, I want to try more from the range because this actual particular um, version of it, I'm not sure was the one for me, but it was a good starting block anyway. And then I've got one here from Earth Conscious, which seems to be smaller in size. So this is 60 grams. But this is also 60 grams, but look at the difference in packaging. So this one's got like a lid and then you push the product up like that. Um, this one has also got a lid, but it's a lot smaller and you also push the product up like so. Um, this one was really, really good. It says strong protection, peppermint and spearmint, natural deodorants, no nasties, made on the Isle of Wight in the UK. I got this from a different eco store um, within my local area. And um, you can also pick these ones up. And I believe you can pick this brand up in Holland and Barrett or on Holland and Barrett online as well. So I will be making a separate video all about my transition to natural deodorants and what I have found out so far. And I will leave in all the gory details. So make so sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Then I've got some makeup empties. Well, this one's not really empty, but it's the mascara from Collection. It's the see-through color one that I bought for Holly for her birthday a couple of years ago. So she could like, she was quite interested in makeup. She's not so much anymore because I think she's been told off by someone, but that's the story for a different day. Um, it's been opened for a couple of years now. It's gone a bit yellowy around the rim. So that needs to go in the bin. Lesson learnt. Don't buy stuff that you know is not going to be used. So that's pretty grim. Um, I have got another mascara here, which is mine. So this is Essence, the False Lashes Mascara, Extreme Volume and Curl. I remember really enjoying this, to be honest with you. And the only reason why I stopped using it is because of my three month rule. Um, I think it was like 3 99 less than £5 at the most. Really good, made in Italy, cruelty free, and all of that majazzle. Um, Kat Von D liquid lipstick in the shade LUV. If you've been watching my um, project pans, then you will have known that I've finished this pretty much to the last dregs you can't get that top bit out it's impossible so i'm really glad that that's finished marvelous and again something else that i finished up in my project pan is the collection illuminating touch foundation really enjoyed this foundation um ended up taking the pump out and scraping around all the inside with a brush to get as much out as i could as possible and that shade is in cool ivory which really really suited me at the time of filming i'm not sure if i use it now it would be a good color match because i've also tanned a little bit because it's been really great weather here in the uk one candle empty and this is a candle that i got for winning the miss slinky 2020 or was it 2019 can't remember award for slimming world so it's actually a really nice candle. I know it's obviously not a Slimming World candle. It's by Shearer Candles. Um, and obviously they've put a Slimming World thing on it. It says, shine bright like the star that you are with Slimming World. Um, and it's a really nice candle. Um, and they're made in Glasgow apparently. So I enjoyed using that. So I rarely have candles. I don't buy any candles. If I have candles, they're things that have been given to me as gifts. So. That's that, and that concludes my empties for the months of don't know, don't know, and May. <laughs> so, could be March, April, and May, maybe. So yeah, good empties, and again, more lessons learnt along my way about, you know, I finished this up now, so when I repurpose, I've got another one of these, but in sort of like a cream form, but once I use that up, do I really want to buy this or is there an eco alternative that I can buy in a glass jar or a glass bottle or something or something metal that can eventually be biodegraded back down? Um, do I really need um, after sun? Arguably yes, but not very often because I put sun cream on 
etc. Um, will I ever find a natural toothpaste uh, that suits me? I doubt it, but I'm willing to spend some money on a quest to find it while using this alongside, I'll have one of these as a backup if things go terribly wrong. There are some things in life that you just have to break away from and spend extra money on for the greater good of your own body is the best thing because these have got aluminium in and these haven't and for the environment and supporting local businesses rather than a big brand i've made that jump now and i'm really happy that i have i'm gutted to throw those away like that and um, it's been a really interesting learning curve so far while using these so yeah it's interesting to see the changes that i've made um I feel like every every empties I'll learn something new and I really you know if that's you know what collecting up my empty packaging and then filming it does then you know that's a good thing and if I can share that information with you guys and you guys then take that on board as well you think oh I didn't realize there's aluminium in those you know in those deodorants I don't really want to be putting that onto my body anymore and then you do actually switch over to these the one change that you've made which is really impactful for lots of different reasons brilliant if you like this video guys please give it a massive thumbs up click subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any videos from me in the future um six days till I brave the shave if you haven't donated yet and you feel like you could at this time then i'll leave my link in the comments down below and in the description bar also until next time guys bye